Hello, welcome back. My name is Joe Giza. Um, I've got sweets today. Uh, we got gummy worms, sour gummy worms, um, and we got gear. And so it's sweet gear videos. It's Monday. Welcome back. Um, hope everybody's doing well. Um, today I wanted to talk about a topic that is kind of prevalent for many, if not most, musicians these days, and that is live streaming. Um, how to kind of optimize and get the best uh, out of your live streams. So um, there's a ton of information on this out there already. So, you know, the more reading you can do, the better. Um, but I kind of picked five things that I think are super important that can really, uh, really kind of optimize things for your, uh, for your audio. Um, the first thing is kind of overlooked by a lot of even uh, uh, studios and performing spaces and sometimes even some pro studios uh, is they overlook the actual space. Um, it's way cooler to spend money on gear, and obviously this is a, a gear-based channel, but um, but man, the uh, the acoustics in your environment are really the biggest the biggest thing, uh, the biggest single contribu contributing factor to the sound. So um, you want to think about the space that you're doing your live stream in. Um, so a lot of uh, singers in particular like to be in spaces that have a little bit of natural ambience, you know, some reverb, uh, you know, the stairwell bathroom kind of thing. That's like the stereotypical, uh, but it's true. And it sounds, it can sound really good there. Um, but a lot of times that lush reverb space doesn't really translate through on a live stream. And um, I'll get into that a little bit more uh, in detail later, but, um, but usually a reverberant space can just sound kind of boingy and echoey and and not pleasant. Um, it doesn't translate, and it can just kind of hurt intelligibility, make it harder to hear what you're saying. Um, so being in a more dead space is usually nine times out of ten better than being in a more ambient space. So um, you know you can do DIY acoustic panels with fiberglass and stuff, and that's awesome. But honestly, if you just like make sure that you're in a space that's you know you're sitting on a rug or carpeting. Um, put like a row of a couple chairs up like behind the camera where you won't see it and then um, just drape like heavy blankets over that or pillows or you know anything that's like soft and squishy um, tapestries on the walls or hang um, you know sheets up or whatever just to soften and absorb a little bit of the sound uh, that can make a huge difference and really helps in this live streaming uh, situation to kind of clean things up and tighten things up a little bit. Um, this is like a bonus. So this is one point number one and a half um, is get a, um, get a piece of recording software. You can use something that's free, any, you know, garage band or audacity or, um, you know, pro tools first, that's free, anything free so that you can do a test recording of yourself so use whatever setup it is that you're going to record plug that audio into a digital recorder listen to it on your computer or play and then listen to it back through some decent headphones check it on the laptop speakers wherever just so that you can hear what's actually going out to the stream so that's the bonus point find a way to record yourself there's cheap free things out there to, to do that with if you don't already have it you should as a musician it's a great demo tool or whatever so uh, get something like that to be able to record yourself and then listen back that way you know what people on the other end are going to be hearing um, so point number two is um, kind of tied into that is get a decent microphone and interface if you don't already have one don't rely on the webcam audio or your laptop's audio, or even your cell phone's audio. The cell phone cameras are really great these days, but don't rely on that. Um, it's still not going to do as well as a microphone. The other benefit is, is that for a mic to really sound nice and intimate is you want it to be really close to you. Well, you can't put your camera right here because obviously nobody wants to watch a live stream of my beard, right? So um, you want the camera far, but you want the microphone close. So they have to be two separate devices. Um, as far as I know, there's no webcams that have a detachable microphone. There's probably some streaming uh, solutions out there now that are like that. Um, I know Marantz has a cool camera microphone all in one, and I think one of their models has a detachable uh, microphone uh, that I'll link to. So that's a cool option. But honestly, for 
for $100 or $120 bucks or something, you can get a bundle of a little condenser mic, a cable, um, a clip, and a little USB interface to plug into your laptop. Um, and those are way better quality than they should be for, for 120 bucks. That's like bottom of the barrel uh, price-wise, but they're amazing. They're really, really good for, for the money, and they go a huge, huge way towards... Uh, making your stream sound better. So get a little interface, a microphone, and then you can record yourself and hear back what's going out to the stream. That way you can make sure that your you know balance is good and then plug that into your streaming software. Um, you can just, uh, there's always options for microphone and camera picking. Um, so you just pick a different audio device and make it that interface and you're good to go. Um, this is point like two and a half as well. Um, is is it's usually better to use a laptop than a cell phone uh, because you get a lot more options for picking your audio device, um, being able to record yourself and everything. It's just easier on a laptop. You get a bigger screen to see what you're going to look like. Obviously, phones and stuff do this just fine these days. Um, there's recording apps for phones. You can pick different audio devices. There's a really cool iOS. Um, uh, interface that you can plug a microphone or a line input into um, that I'll link to that uh, below as well. Um, so there's some options, but you just get a lot more flexibility using a laptop. So I would try your best to be able to do that. And there's another reason that I'll get to later as well. Um, point number three is um, uh, going out of the audio domain for a second is uh, camera and lighting um, is huge. Um, even the video people that I know still say that like, the difference between good and bad video is the audio. So so the audio is really important. That should be like number one. This is music. People need to hear you. Um, I've heard some studies that talk about perception saying that, um, you know, the brain is, is better at filling in choppy video than choppy audio. Like more people find the audio in, uh, dropouts to, or bad quality audio to be more distracting than bad video. So get the audio right. But getting decent video is pretty simple. I'm using a cheap $40 knockoff little, you know, GoPro kind of thing, but it's really, really affordable and it's not great, but it's good enough. Um, it's better than what's in my laptop. So cell phone cameras are pretty good, but again, you get the camera versus microphone thing and I think it can be complicated. So, so a decent cheap webcam is great um, for the video. And then for lighting, um, you know, you, uh, you want to be, you don't want anything bright behind you because that can wash out the camera. The camera might try and focus on that. So a big window behind you or lamps, you probably want to be on a dark background. And then, uh, if you have a few lights on in the room is cool, but you can make it a little bit brighter, makes it easier to see you. And then if you have a light source, that's going to light up your face is try lighting yourself from an angle instead of directly on in front of you. So if you have a lamp, put it like off to one side a little bit out of the camera's view, but lighting you. Um, and that can just kind of make your face like a little bit more three dimensional and, and look cool. So um, just something to try shadows can be interesting. Um, so mess around with that and you can make yourself look cool. Uh, something else worth noting here um, in in point uh, 3.5 um, is uh, this the the uh, streaming services or uh, video conferencing services, a lot of them try and compress the the data stream to you know make your stream take up less bandwidth, um, and they'll do that by, um, for example, they'll try and they'll, they'll not transmit information if your background isn't changing. So it you know it's giving you a whole grid of pixels for your entire image, but if behind you isn't moving at all. Um, that reduces a lot of bandwidth. So if you ever notice if you're like um, FaceTiming somebody and if you move around a lot, so the whole background is changing and you're changing, that's when the video can get stuttery because now all of a sudden it's sending out a lot more data because it has to tell you each pixel that's changing. So right now, nothing back here is changing. It's just me. So it's now like 30% of the whole picture is what's moving. So having um, similar dark colors can help and then like less motion is really good too obviously you have to move but you know avoid having like a tv on in the background or people walking behind you or whatever kind of goes without saying but just something to to note that there can be some actual technical reasons to keep like as little motion as possible um i'm sure some people have this figured out uh some streaming services but 
not all do. So there's just something to think about. Um, so point number four is the software that you choose. There's a million and a half different uh, streaming platforms, Facebook Live and YouTube and all that. And then there's ones that run natively on your computer like Zoom and you know all these other things out there. They're all pretty much the same. Um, there's slightly different feature sets. Obviously, some are, are designed specifically for um, video conferencing where it's just a bunch of people talking and, you know, that's fine. But they can all pretty much be used for music. But there's a key in almost every one and certainly every one that I've seen that's really worth looking at. Um, under you, the audio preferences, wherever you go in and set where your audio is coming from and, and, you know, all those kinds of things, there's almost always going to be a box that says something like, um, audio enhancement or noise reduction or um, sound processing or something like that. Uh, sometimes it's a checkbox and button or sometimes it's a slider of how much audio processing do you want. And you want to take anything that's remotely called that and turn it off. Um, so basically what that stuff is doing is it's meant to process the audio to make speech more intelligible. That's what all this stuff is doing for the most part. Um, there's no processing to music that software can do intelligently because it's all so different. But you can write a piece of software to intelligently figure out what's a voice versus what's a background noise, what's a dog barking or a car going by or a washing machine or uh, ambience in the room. So this ties back to that first point, right? The, the microphone built into a webcam and the streaming software all have this active noise cancellation stuff going on. It's similar to what's in like no, noise canceling headphones. Um, and it, it can actually try and reduce stuff like reverb in your room. It hears that and it says, no, I don't want that. And it's going to try and get rid of it or anything that isn't a voice like a guitar. So if you're playing a guitar, it's going to go, that's not a voice. I'm going to try and suppress that. So it's going to actively try to ruin <laughs> the musical portion of what you're doing, which is kind of the whole point. Um, so I'm sure there are some software uh, uh, applications out there that are trying to do things that can help sound and audio, but uh, or, or, I'm sorry, that can help the music portion of audio. But honestly, I don't buy that any of it really makes it better than just flat. So if you have a decent interface plugged in and a decent microphone, um, even if you're using a webcam uh, microphone too, if that's all you have, still disabling that audio processing is going to make things way better because there isn't this algorithm going on in the background that's trying to cancel out and make speech only intelligible. So you can lose fidelity in uh, uh, you can you can gain speech intelligibility at the expense of fidelity, if that makes sense. So think of a um, like a landline telephone, right? They've done specific processing to your voice to make it more clear, more audible to understand what you're saying, but not to sound high quality. So it's kind of the same thing. Um, there's a there's a big difference there, and you don't want anything getting in the way of the music, obviously. So turn all that stuff off. Lastly, point number five is the internet itself, and the internet is right? WWW stands for Wild Wild West, right? Um, the the meanings of that has changed a little bit <laughs> these days. Um, but um, the point being is that the internet has never been reliable. Wi-Fi in particular has never been reliable. We all know that there's dropouts and your phone is constantly switching between Wi-Fi and the cell tower and pinging back and forth and whatever. Um, especially now with so much of the world being online and virtual, um, you know, there's only so much bandwidth out there and so much more of it's getting used now and people are trying to stay on top of it and ISPs are working towards making things better, but it's not there yet, practically. Um, so eliminating all the variables, kind of the only thing that you have at your disposal is plugging straight into the Wi-Fi or plugging straight into the internet. Don't use Wi-Fi, turn the Wi-Fi off on your computer. And that's another reason not to use a cell phone is I don't know if there's any ethernet to thunder uh, lightning bolt plugs out there <laughs> maybe but i don't think so um so make sure that you're not using the wi-fi get on the wired network go to your router plug straight into it you can buy 100 feet of cat5 for like 
$25 on Amazon. So if your router's in the other room and you want to live stream here, just run a long cable and plug straight into the internet. Um, it'll take out the pretty much the only variable that you have control over. Um, you can make sure to buy a high-end package and everything, but plugging straight in is basically free compared to upping your subscription. So don't rely on Wi-Fi and um, you know that should make things a lot, a lot better. Um, um, just a little bonus tag to the end, using software on your computer like OBS Studios and stuff like that can be a really cool way to up the the, uh, the quality level of your live stream. Like you can do overlays and, and put your logo in there and stuff like that. And that's all really great. So if you're a techie and you wanna get into that, it's a really cool way of doing it. Um, and a lot of those have a better uh, better encoding uh, stuff that, that kind of works on the back end better than what's happening um, through YouTube or Facebook or something like that. So you can improve the quality a little bit sometimes by doing that, um, but you really kind of got to know what you're doing. And this is more focused at um, people who are just trying to make do with what they've got or, or making a pretty small investment that doesn't require a ton of, you know, learning a new piece of software and everything. But, but if you're techie and you feel like going to look up OBS, it's free. It's what I'm using to record this right now. It's pretty cool. A lot of people are using it these days and there's a ton of support out there for it. Um, so uh, that's all I got for today. Um, comment and subscribe and all the YouTube social media things uh, you want. Feel free to share. Uh, leave me any questions if you got um, or any corrections in the comments, whatever. And, um, you know, uh, send me some links to your live streams, too. I'd love to see what everybody's doing and see what your setups look like. So uh, that's all I got for now. So thanks so much. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next time.